Yo, what's up guys? In this video, I wanted to give you guys a real deal. I wanted to show you guys a house that I purchased um, by taking over a mortgage. So, you know, you know, I teach how to buy property without having to qualify for a loan. Uh, and today I want to go over the whole scenario, the whole, all the shenanigans. So that way you guys can learn how I found the deal, how I negotiated the deal, and then also how I was able to get paid on the deal, okay? Let's get into it. What's up guys, it's your boy, Sawan Belcher. This is me taking action on Instagram and YouTube. Thanks for thanks for being here and a part of the uh, and part of the Tempter family. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, typically, weekly, we talk about uh, finance, business, and how to make as much money as you want during a 30-day period of time while cherry picking the very best deals for yourself, okay? Uh, so we use real estate in order to make money in multiple different ways. Now, the deal that we're gonna talk about um, is a deal that I've owned for a few years now. I forget exactly which year I picked it up. Maybe 2019, I think it was. And uh, let's flash a little picture of it right here. Now, the, now this picture is a little ugly, but this is how we found it. We did end up fixing it up. But I wanna share um, what made this deal so good, okay? Now, you're gonna run into a bunch more opportunities like this um, because that's where we are in the market right now. So in the last couple years, the market was gravy as far as getting the cheapest money that you can get. Uh, so that created a little buyer's frenzy because you can go out and get approved for a loan easily, you know, get 95%, 90% loan to value, okay? Um, uh, even 80%, you know, loan to value on refinances, get paid, buy it in cash with somebody else's money, fix it up, rent it out, then you could refinance it and get paid a bag, you know, to keep it, okay? But now, since the, you know, criteria is changing, interest rates are going up, banks are going from loan to value to loan to cost now you know now investors are having to bring cash to refinance so the market is changing um and so i wanted to bring this strategy up because it's amazing it's amazing to know that you don't need money you just need opportunity okay the way we the way we found this little house was uh, we actually uh, we actually market to other wholesalers and investors in our area. So I know most people, whenever they're making cold calls and they hear that there's an investor on the line, they kind of freeze up and get off the phone because, oh, we're doing the same business. They don't have a good deal for us. That's not how we do the business, okay? We typically call other wholesaler bandit signs. You know, we'll um, join other uh, investors' buyers' lists and we'll do business with each other. So we will, you know, make offers with them. The, they'll make offers to us, or maybe we'll even present them opportunities to lend. In this particular case, um, it was a, a local wholesaler who had the property under contract, and they were looking to sell the property. We made them our cash offer and what and what we could do. Okay. Now, the beautiful part about how we operate this whole thing is whenever we actually make a realtor or a wholesaler or another investor an offer, we'll keep track of it in some form or fashion, okay? Um, sometimes we'll you know, put it in our you know, Podio system, we'll, we'll always put it in our Podio CRM system, um, but other times when it's, when it's off-market opportunities with wholesalers, we'll also put it on a separate spreadsheet, okay? Now, this list we call out outperform the competition list. There's a couple different things that you can get from this list. When you make them an offer, you put it on your spreadsheet, and then 30 to 45 days later, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do market research. You're gonna go into the county GIS website and see who purchased that property from the wholesaler, okay? The first piece of information that you're gonna find out from looking that up is who purchased it, okay? Who purchased it is significant because if it was a cash deal only, that person was able to pay cash for the property. So now you have a new real live cash buyer, okay? Do all of your skip tracing hacks, get their phone number, introduce yourself, add them to your buyers list. So that way when you do this outperform the competitions, uh, petitions, petitions list, you'll be able to hack, you know, or, you know, uh, or kind of just like, I guess you can say hack. You can, you're gonna be able to hack 
all of your competition's buyers, okay? Now, the second thing that you'll get from this list, you'll know exactly what things are selling for, okay? You'll know exactly what things are selling for in different neighborhoods and different areas, so when you're out making offers, you're gonna be way more informed than your competition. Okay, and then the last thing that you're gonna that you're gonna get is you're gonna be able to know what is not selling in you know particular neighborhoods, what prices are not selling for. In this case, we found out 45 days later that the deal did not sell. Okay, what we'll do next is we'll call the wholesaler, ask him if the deal sold. Of course, we know it didn't, and we'll see if we can walk him through um, either bird dogging us the lead so we can come up with a creative option or trying to train this person on the phone in a few minute conversation of what a creative deal would look like so he can go back and pitch it to the seller. Now this guy chose to bird dog it to us. That meant that he would just give us the seller's contact information and we would just pay him a fee when we go to close on the property. Now we reached out to that seller and we asked them why the deal didn't close. Now this questioning is important. Um, because whenever you're seeking motivation, you might already know the motivation, and we did because the wholesaler told us why it didn't sell. Price was too high, clearly, for the amount of work that it needed, um, and they owed money on it. And so we asked her why didn't it sell, let it be her idea, okay? Um, and through that information, we found out that you know, Papa, <laughs> Papa and the ex-wife, they're, um, well, she wasn't ex yet, they were in the middle of separating, that he had taken out a second mortgage on the house that was paid off before to quote unquote fix up the house, but he has spent the money on other things. And so now he was actually behind on payments and he had another three or four weeks before it was gonna go into auction at this point. So I asked her, hey, well, do you have, do you have uh, an option that could help you, you know, stop the house from going into foreclosure? And at the time she said no. So I said, well, look, I don't know if I could, but if I were to, would you allow me to take over your existing payments, okay? And then I give you cash outside of your loan. He said, well, really, we just need Paw Paul not to be worried about <laughs> this mortgage payment. That's what she told me. And so, you know, so we end up coming up with an agreement that I would take over the $30,000, $35,000 mortgage, okay? The payments on that mortgage was $320. Um, at the time, you know, we went to rentometer.com to find out how much the current rent was, and we verified that with local property managers. The rent was $850, and uh, mortgage is $320. Um, the seller needed $2,000. Write this down. The seller needed $2,000. She was behind $35,000. Um, the foreclosure attorney fees was like $1,200. Um, and then to fix it up was another 13 grand. Uh, probably within a couple days, I ended up meeting them in person, saw the house, Their, the Duke Energy Power was off at this time, and I got them to sign a purchase agreement. Now, one thing you'll find out if you're taking my class, if you're taking my Home Loans for Everyone Subject 2 class, is you need certain docs. So I had them sign the purchase agreement and we used our, our great clause. Um, seller agrees to leave mortgage in place, Buyer agrees to make payments in, until paid in full. That made it legal for me to take over her payments and she was aware of it. At that point, I had, I had to make a decision because I didn't have the $13,000 to fix it up. I didn't have the $2,000 to give to them. I didn't have the $3,200 $3, to catch up the mortgage. And I also didn't have the $1,200 to pay the foreclosure attorney. So I had to come up with a strategy where I could make money off of having the contract. You are not a wholesaler. Very, very key right here. This is when I started really, you know, really grasping the fact that I wasn't a wholesaler. In my career at this particular point, I didn't like when people called me a wholesaler. You know, when I was joining everybody's buyer's list, they say, hey, are you a wholesaler? No, I'm a buyer, you know? My goal is to buy rental property and rent it out, you know, buy houses, fix them up, sell it. So why would I call myself a wholesaler? You know, and that's my mentality going into these deals. So instead of me just looking at it in a way where we were just to assign the deal, I also looked at it into like, well, what would happen if I were to just resell it as is? What would have happened if I were to keep it as a rental? And so through that, I came up with an option where I ran my equity play, I ran my equity play and I had, and I um, bought in a partner and I ended up getting paid $5,000 to keep the property. We rented the property out and we ended up getting paid like another, I think it was like 450 or something that we net on the property. We, at this point in time, we only owe, cause we've, 
you know, the renter that's been there, it's been the same person, has been paying down the principal on the property. Uh, we've been keeping the property up, even doing upgrades to it. Um, and so now we only owe about $19,000 and it's currently worth about $98,000, okay? Now, I'm telling you this story um, because, because number one, there's so many learning lessons here. The way we found it, okay? The mindset of us finding that deal, right? Of being a buyer on other buyers, buyers list, okay? The, the research part, what kind, the kind of market research we do so we can know more than our competition, okay? And then also how we look at deals, right? How we look at deals and how we structure them is all important in this business. Now, will you be able to grasp all of this stuff in one watch? Probably not. You're probably gonna have to watch this video again so you can, you know, grab two more pointers, work off of that, implement in that, you're, implement that in your business and then come back again and watch it again and implement some more stuff. I totally get it. But I wanted to share this story to let you know it is real. You can buy houses without having to qualify for a loan. You can have equity in these deals. You can have cash flow in these deals. You can get paid to buy them, paid to keep them, and paid whenever you want to sell them. So uh, this is one of my stories. I hope you guys enjoyed this, okay? Um, sorry I couldn't find the after picture. I tried. I tried to find the after picture. It was a cute little house. Maybe this is what I'll do. This is what I'll do. I'm gonna leave this video right here. I actually did this video. It's called uh, my rental number 14, okay? It's, the, it's actually the after part of this particular house. You guys go check that out so you can see what it looks like now. You guys have a blessed day. Peace.